I just want to make sure Brother Silas here. Praise the Lord. Um, Tuesday night of this or last week, um, I was headed towards the church and we had choir rehearsal. And um, I was meeting with my cousin before he left for town. And I spoke to my mom and she said, okay, well, make sure you come to Bible. I mean, I'm sorry. Make sure you come to choir rehearsal. So I waited for him. He never showed up. And um, it had been a long day. So long story short, I said, you know, I'm tired. I'm just going to go home. Well, on my way home, I said, I'm going to stop at the store. So I met the light and um, my turning signal was red. And I put my head down and I just saw the glare of the green light for the cars to go straight. So I automatically turned. And something said, look back. And I looked back and I said, I just ran that light. And right when I looked over, it was a suburban. It was a suburban coming, coming at me. And I said, this suburban is about to hit me. So when it hit me, my first thought was this was a hard hit. But as my car started to flip over, I just thought, this is it. I'm, this is it. I'm about to die. This is it. And I landed upside down. And all the airbags went off except for the, the driver's seat. And I heard, turn your car off. So I immediately turned my car off. And I heard people yelling and asking me questions, is your seatbelt on? And I touched my face because I, I just knew my face was bloody. It wasn't no blood. They said, can you feel your legs? And my attention went to my legs. I said, I can feel my legs. And immediately when I realized I'm in a car upside down and there is nothing wrong with me, I just immediately began to thank God and I began to cry and begin to just thank God. And they were able to carry me out of the car. But the biggest thing of this testimony is that even though, you know, I thought that I was dying. The sad thing about it is that I was not ready. <laughs> the scary thing is that I was not ready. <laughs> I don't know if anybody has experienced a life-threatening situation. <laughs> but to be in this situation and being this close to death and you're not ready is nothing you want to play with. <laughs> And I just began to cry that entire night, even in the hospital. And I asked God, I said, God, why did you let me live? <laughs> because I wasn't sinning, but my dedication, my commitment, my love for him had changed. <laughs> and when I said, God, why did you let me live? He immediately said, it's because I love you and I have a work for you to do. <laughs> yes. So even though I don't have a car... I went through that for all of you. I went through that for my sister, for my family, to let you all know that God is serious. God is serious about serving him. And he gave me a chance to let you all know that every day that we wake up is not that we're getting by. It's a chance. It's a chance to get it right. Because when I was turning over and thought I was dying, it didn't matter that I was single. It didn't matter about how much money was in my account. It didn't, nothing else mattered was that I was dying and I wasn't ready. But I told God that would be the last time I faced that situation and I won't be ready. I will be ready. I vowed to God that I will do what you want me to do. I will go where he wants me to go. I will say what we want me to say. Because nothing is worth going to hell for. Nothing is worth going to hell for. My dreams, my goals, the things that I want to do in life, it doesn't mean anything. Because when I leave this earth, it will just be me and him. And that book of life. And I will make sure that my name is written in it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.